Hello Tab Nation, it's Tom and today we're going to do another intro video having to do with time, format time, some built-in variables, just time in general. Uh, I see this question comes up a lot where people don't really understand how the time formatting and all that works or how to use the built-in variable. So hopefully this will help you guys out. So let's take a look at that code, shall we? So this code I just actually pulled from the AHK forms. Uh, it was pretty well done. There was nothing really too special I needed to do. I have some code at the bottom that I uh, wrote up. So we'll take a look. So I'm going to push F1. I'm going to go ahead and actually run this script. And we'll just go through this one by one here, just kind of showing you. So we're just doing format time. That's the uh, command there. What we want the time to be saved as in the variable. So we're just using in time string. And then we're just going to do a message box that kind of says what this format's doing and it's going to display the variable in that message box so we can see an example of it so f1 so the first one's pretty basic it's just format time string uh, nothing really fancy at the end there and that's just going to grab the uh, time and date and it pretty much grabs everything pm friday you know august 6 all that now for some reason we want to reverse that where we have the date first versus the time all you're doing is putting a comma here and putting r and that's just going to reverse it so we'll go ahead and push that okay so we get the next message box so same thing it's just putting the date uh friday there too and the time at the end and that's all that r does is just reverse all right on to the next one this one is just doing time. So all we're doing there is we're putting two commas and time. So we're saying we want to get the time first. Obviously putting like an R here would do nothing because we're not grabbing the date. So we don't really want to do that. So make sure you put two commas there and put time. Hold on. Some of my lights went out there. That was weird. All right. Now the next one is a 24 hour time what you're doing there and i never really understood this but for that you're doing what we did up here but we're adding t12 and that's going to give you the 24 hour time so 1800 here not sure why that doesn't say 24 versus 12 you think that would be grabbing the 12 hour time cycle if you have any knowledge of why it's done that way let me know in the comments below I'm kind of curious that just for me that doesn't really make sense but okay <laughs> Uh, next one is long date. Long date is just grabbing that Friday, August 6, 2021. So you're grabbing all that information. Once again, you're putting two commas there. And the next one, let me uh, scroll here a little bit. Uh, where were we? Uh, this one is going to format the time uh, that's in here. And you can customize it how you want. So you can do like D, 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 M, 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 all that. And if you're wondering about that, I will link that in the description below. There's a master list here that kind of shows you what it does. So like that D, 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 four Ds here, uh, that's just displaying the full name of the date of the week. So it's doing the full on like Monday versus doing M, O, N with three Ds so that it, you know, depending on if you want the full or just the abbreviation, you can kind of play around with that. But I'll put that in the description below for you, just so that uh, you can see what each one of these do in case you want to display that. So here it's grabbing pretty much everything, but it's putting the time at the end. Next, what do we got here? Whoop. Next one, uh, we're just grabbing the month and the day. So, you know, pretty much all the same stuff here. We're throwing in month name, and that's kind of where we're getting that. We're basically formatting that variable or what it's going to say down here versus putting this in the message box. So we, we could put this down here if we wanted to, like that. But you can also start to kind of write what you want up here just by putting in it into little uh, commas there or upper commas. Uh, not good with my English stuff there. And we're just grabbing the full month. And then that four D's there, which grabs the full day of the week. So Friday, and that just looks like that. So you don't have to put, you know, all your text down here in the message box. You can also put it up here 
uh, you know, you might not be using a message box. You might have it automatically be doing some sort of uh, maybe a send so that you can just press the button to have it automatically insert the date format that you like into an email or something, you know, whatever, it's up to you. And the last one we got here is basically uh, Y week. And uh, let's see here, January 1st of 2005, which is what we got up here, 2005, January 1st. That's kind of the date it's looking for. You know, up here is 2005. Uh, and then the fourth month, that's how I was grabbing that information. January 1st is in the following ISO year and week number, year, week. So there we use a different variable. So that's just kind of figuring out like past dates or future dates. If you need to know, uh, maybe for scheduling purposes is something you would use this for. Okay, I was talking about sins up above. Maybe you want to have it just auto inject into an email for you. Just throw that into a clipboard and use send this little upper character, which stands for control V, which is paste. The reason I do this, I mean, you could put this down here like this. That's fine. But I like to throw things into the clipboard and use control V, especially if you're going to be using like longer date, because with control V, it's an instant pace versus mimicking you typing and out on a keyboard. So it is faster this way and just looks cleaner too. So I always recommend people use control V after putting the variable they had into a clipboard. Uh, so yeah, we can actually see that, you know, in action here. Just open up a notepad. We're just going to push F2. Boom. So, see, that was really fast and clean. Just threw it in there. Uh, another thing is some people like to have certain things happen at a time or a date. I've done programs where I have it every night at 4 o'clock, check if it's 4 o'clock, and check if there's a new file to update it, or run a new script, or you do some sort of command. So, this is kind of how you do that. We're going to push F3. It's going to start a timer. So that's just set timer. Where do you want it to jump to? Your handler, which is down here. And we're going to have it go off every 15 seconds or 15,000 milliseconds. Obviously, I'm just doing a small window there for the demo. If you want it to check to go off at a certain time of the day, you should do this every hour because there's no point in checking just check every hour. Hey, if it's 4 p.m. or 4 a.m. at night, probably nobody's at work. Go ahead and, you know, run your check. But if it's not 4 p.m. or a.m., do nothing. So it's going to jump down here every 15 seconds. Like I said, you should probably do, if you're doing daily things, maybe once every 24 hours or once an hour if you're doing an hour thing. Uh, find the day. So we want to see if it's Friday which it is at the time of filming, so that works. If in string, year week, find the time. So it's just seeing, it's pulling that string from up here that we got earlier from this format time. And it's going to check to see if Friday is in that name. And if it is, it's going to display a message box for this video. Obviously, you would have it do something else, maybe some type of action or file run, and just return. That's really all it's going to do. And then we can uh, put a message box here. It says, like, message box. Nope. Let's just go with nope. Let me rerun that. And we're going to push F3. Yep. Wait about 15 seconds. And you can change this. You could always put an input box here in case you want to change it without having to change the code or, you know, you're handing your code out. Maybe they don't want something happening on Friday. They want it on a Thursday. So there we go. Today is Friday. So that is correct. Obviously, you would have... I, I forgot to put a return. That's why it hit that second message box. So that's actually how it should look right there. Oh, let's go ahead and shut that down instead of going off every 15 seconds. Uh, modification. This is good too. I've done some stuff for people where they need to check if a file has been updated and then perform some type of action. So you can do that here with file get time. 
what do you want to save the system's uh, timestamp, I guess we'll call it, and where is it located? So we could do something, uh, let's, so this is kind of like the file path. You can also do a built-in variable, which is a underscore desktop, and that's automatically going to find that. And what do I got on my desktop here? Here's a file we'll, we'll use for our example. It's just a text file, and then we'll have a display message box with the output variable. And we're going to do a return here. Yeah, if I can type. Yeah, so let's get that up and running. I do not have a hotkey for that. Let's just throw an F12. And you don't have to use a hotkey. If you just want to have a set timer, you could do that to have it just constantly go off. There's no point in that. So there we go. And uh, that's the timestamp of when the file, uh, reading list text file, was created. Now, obviously, we can use that format stuff up above that we saw, the last two especially, to put this into a little bit better and more readable kind of standard there. So you definitely want to use these. One of these two would be the best, depending on what kind of date or time if you're getting that. Yeah, that's that. Uh, this one. Uh, it's all the exact same thing. The only difference here is I'm putting a comma at the end with a C. And the C is going to actually look at the creation date versus the uh, last modified date. So if you want to know when it was created versus modified, just throw that C at the end there. And that's it for that. The last one I want to talk about, I'm just going to do one example here, but I'm going to link a page here at theautohotkeys.com they show you all the more but there are built-in variables where you don't have to do the format time up here you can just do like f4 and a m m with that underscore there and what are we doing f4 here that gives you the month in a two type format so if you do like uh, i mean there's a few actually i'll just pop it up on here come on you can open there it goes. So there's a bunch here. So these are built in to AutoHockey's. AutoHockey has a decent amount. I mean, you can get lots of stuff like now, uh, seconds, hours, minutes, days with the whole name, Sunday, Sunday. So there's built in formats, depending on what you're doing. If you want to use the built in variable or use the format time uh, kind of way I showed you at the beginning there. So yeah. If there's anything you think I missed, definitely let me know in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button. Throwing you guys videos every week. And if you have any more questions on this, definitely let me know. I'm glad to help out. See you in the next one. Bye.